Game three, however. Top right Mance has been uh, basically the name the of the game, of the game today. Yes, so far. Three of them, H2K, Shivana, Rumble, and Hecarim every time. If that puts Huni on a Lee Sin, I think that's fine because Lee Sin has not been a very good pick for him up there. He's not really had much of an impact. Mm -hmm. You gotta worry about He's still a, he still a Baron. He did steal a Baron. But they lost that game. We'll give him that one. Definitely. Uh, so far, it's all the same, though. I mean, yeah, nothing I, I, don't, changed. I don't see the reason to change this. Even though H2K lost that last game, again, they they did cut out a lot of Huni's effectiveness. Yes, he was still able to set a picks, but it was very so, dependent on the snowball. Fnatic and Ban Zed, he had yeah. first pick LeBlanc. And they, they have a, a, a good setup for Febben in the mid lane. H2K will have the last pick now. If they leave LeBlanc open, we're going to have to see what they can counter it with. Normally, Zed has been one of the go-to picks. They decided to go for Diana. I'm sure they were discussing it, uh, talking about it here at least. Shivana coming yeah. in. Very, very similar bands. Once again, this is yeah. the same ones we saw last game. Very similar to what we saw in game number one. Thresh was first picked in game one for Fnatic. They wanted Kissing on Annie so they could camp him. Problem was they did the whole let's go 2v1 mid and not have standard lanes. So they never managed to pull it off. And Kissing ended up having a fantastic game on Annie with the flash tippers and gauges he could use. No clear card first week. I mean, Gragas has been a big pick for Lulek. Like, Sijuani has not been picked in this series at all, despite still being fantastic in other regions. Mm -hmm. That would have been a standard first pick coming in. There's no real top lane you have to secure here. You don't have to go for the least Sin if you're Huni. Yeah. I think they're not entirely sure just yet, but uh, the Nunu, I think, would make some sense for them. They do take it. And now it could be Fnatic looking to do one, you know, once again, this kind of protect the AD sure. carry comp. I, mm. They can do the same. That's I, I, very I, I true. think it, it really just is that they, there wasn't a lot of first pickable champions that they really needed. For these teams here. Yeah. Uh, in these specific it, teams yeah. in this situation. And what they're looking for, that means it's very good for H2K to be on the red side because you don't really take anything away from them by picking this Nuno. Gragas has been the go to pick for Lulix anyway. So by them getting two picks now and having the counter pick as the last pick here for potentially Ryu is going to be very, very good for them. And they can be happy being on the red side. Looking at it, clearly a lot of talk going in to this one here. Do you want to take the Gragas Annie again like you ran in, in game one? Do you want the Sivir, which was so good for Yannin in the first game to start these fights as well? Clearly a lot more impactful than the Jinx, which never got to late game, which was one of the problems for them. And there's the Gragas, obviously. Yeah, also the Janna, though. So that's actually a, a serious amount of disengage if they want it for that. Yes, but and, 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 and it's a takeaway from what Fnatic ran in game two, where they had Janna, Nunu, and then the Lucian pickup. It was some, it's somewhat weird, because they had like a protect the AD carry, but then they ran Lucian and not a, a clear cut hyper carry. But it was enough to buff the Lucian up to be super, super dangerous in the late game. That's now been taken away with the Janna. You cancel it for H2K here. You, they have run hyper carries like Jinx. We saw it in the last game. You can do it here. As you mentioned yourself, there's double knockback, so the double disengage options. If a Lee Sin jumps in with no flash because he's running Smite Teleport, you're going to see him ward jump in, and you can knock him back before he kicks your AD carry into the, into, into the enemy team. Yeah, it's going to be a lot trickier to try and pull that off. And we were talking about, does Huni you know, get stuck on this Lee Sin? It looks like it is the case. I want to see Zed. Take LeBlanc again. I want to see Rio pull we out the Zed. We could have that LeBlanc guy, man. Back in season Zed, three, yeah. was such a god on Zed. Sadly, again, a lot of people just remember just, him from just, losing to just Faker. Remember that, but That's still. not what you should remember. He was. I think you, you omit a lot of uh, very terrifying things if you let that be the only thing in your head. Yeah, I feel so like again, he's asking right now if he can. If he can, can I, can I, can I Zed guys? I mean, he, he picked it against Copenhagen Walls. While Zed has for a lot of mid laners fallen slightly down because it's so hard late game with all these big big tanks coming in to do anything, and because picks like Chogath and Urgot beats him in lane, so you, you can't really early pick him anymore. But now LeBlanc has been shown, and it's been a matchup where if you pick Zed into it, you force LeBlanc to go for Arm Guard. It's a tricky one for her. You delay her own spikes quite a lot, her own power spikes. And you have kill potential on her, honestly. Nearly all game long. And they're saving the last pick. Going for Cyan top lane. So not Shin this time, but the big tank still. For Odo Amne, it is his style. Mm -hmm. Let's see if there's a Zed coming from, uh, from Ryu. 
We'll have to wait till the next rotation. Fnatic. Ah, uh, they got full theirs. physical. Yeah, I, I feel like they kind of. Yeah, I guess Ari's coming in. Boo hoo hoo. Yeah. Well. Oh well. Maybe next time, Deficio. Yeah. Maybe next time. I mean, he can go Cassiopeia again if you want. He. Yeah. He, he honestly did well in the laning phase, one on one. The problem was once the map got split up. And he was stuck in a side lane where he's no mobility compared to LeBlanc who can jump around. He can never push the, the side lanes. He just has to sit and clear the waves at, the, at his own tower and then join his team for team fights. LeBlanc has a lot more split pushing potential in that sense and pick potential in the jungle, which was one of the problems for H2K if they want to run the same setup. But I like the fact they picked the Sivir just because it was so good for them to force fights in the mid game, in the last game, and it gives so much pushing potential as well, just like a Jinx would have. And an case. insane amount of mobility. I mean, just every one of these champions has either a dash or a speed boost or something to that nature. Now, over on Fnatic's side, they once again choose to go with the Lucian pickup. They pick up the Thresh uh, as their last pick, as their support. Now, what does H2K take for their last choice? We will see. Arya Cassiopeia would be the obvious ones because they have not enough magic damage to really pick a Z here. For themselves, Sign has a little bit. Gragas is obviously building full tank, not gonna add a whole lot of damage in that department himself, which would be tricky for H2K. But Fnatic, same kind of setup. It's full skirmish focus. You got that least in top lane, you got LeBlanc mid lane. Lucian, one of the best AD carries in terms of early fights, early skirmishes as well. So they're running the same setup as we have seen in the other games for them, or at least in, in game two. There's the Ari we were talking about could still be changed. It is it is a bit of a, a tough matchup for Ari because early game, before level 6, you don't have the mobility LeBlanc has with Distortion. So she's deciding the fights and you need to time your charm with her jumping in with the Distortion and hit her in the air for you to win the trade early on. So we tend to see Ari players play fairly passive. And then once you hit level 6, that's where you can look for all-ins. But you will never have the same kill pressure as the LeBlanc when it comes to choosing the fights yourself. Also later in the game, I know Fibbon really likes this matchup because he can still split push later, where Ari has to walk into like face check situations and then you have to use your ulti defensively and you're out of mobility, which is a problem. Yeah, it, it's a tough situation, but we were singing Ryu's praises earlier and I feel like uh, it's not just extending to Zed, he's definitely had some serious Ari games this season, or this split, I should say. I mean, six and two on the champion, Definitely not a bad uh, score overall for them. And, you know, he plays a typically more supporting role. But last week, yeah, I don't before know about playoffs. I mean, Yeah, before, before playoffs, playoffs, excuse me. Like, I mean, that was that was the case. But then it just absolutely changed. So I feel like I don't know if anyone can necessarily predict exactly how H2K is going to utilize their players. As both the coaches, once again, shake hands, walking off the stage for the third time today. Yeah, it's, it's, it's two teams running very mid-game focused. A bit like we have seen before from, mm -hmm. from Fnatic at least, H2K now joining in this sense with the Ari. But they also got a good late game with double tank and the Sivir to buff up everyone. Yeah, we'll have to see how this one goes, guys. Keep on sending in your replies, your tweets. Let us know if you think this series is going 2 and one for either team. With, of course, FNC winner H2K win. We'll tally those up as it goes. The crowd continues the hype, but hush settles as game number three begins. Who will get the advantage going forward? H2K took game one after they adapted so well to Fnatic's early strategy, and then it was fairly easy for them to close it out. Welcome Fnatic then in the last game managed to finally get quite a few picks and really punished H2K for picking a stupid dragon fight, safe to say at least, to secure an ace. Yes, indeed. Now with this one starting off, Fnatic not moving a muscle. I think using the sure. Fnatic uh -oh. Janna skin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Small details. Alright, so H2K decides to invade in. Jungle here. Wanna spot the red buff because of the way Fnatic has been playing the level ones where they lane swap. And they have this double jungle set up, not together, Rainova and Huni, but they're starting on different sides of the jungle. Now they can see two of the camps on the bottom side, if Huni's starting there. Last time he started at game one, sorry, he started on the red buff, and then he invaded in towards the blue buff of H2K. They're gonna find Steelback. They still don't know that Huni is sitting in that bush here. What is he trying to accomplish? Is he gonna go up, see if he can get a Gromp? But he's no Flash. 
There's no wall to jump to either this cooldown and his totems. He's obviously not going to have any ways of getting out. Yeah, this is very, very strange. What are you trying to do? you think he maybe do? tries to steal the Grom, but... Uh, are we going to get the Lantern level 1 from Yellowstar over the wall? He's being pushed back now. So, Hoon is all, all on his own In behind enemy, enemy lines. Yeah. But so is Rain over on the top side. Again, Fnatic going for three buffs and extra K. Has no idea who is there. All right. And now they do. So and he takes it. He does take it. Lulex does dodge out the Sonic Wave, so Huni should be able to make his escape. Doesn't have to spend anything here. And the crowd loves him, man. Can't believe that just worked. I mean... In your jungle. <laughs> taking your Grom. All right, okay. Fnatic really putting so much focus once again on denying jungle from Lulex. Raynover took the red buff. He's going to take the Raptors as well here away from Lulex while the Grump was lost at the same time. And he was waiting for H2K to show up in the lanes, and then he just walked up, smited, walked away. Even Yellowstar was nearby if needed. And once again, H2K, early jungle, but this time it's not a lane swap. Odo Amne did the camp for himself, got level two, and he's now on top side farming it in while Huni's doing a second camp. He's doing Raptors. He will even do red buff, get level three from that one before he goes top lane. Oh, no mind. He he it. Well, he's still going to get another he's level eventually, for Eventually, yeah. Well, let's see what happens once he finishes off those Krugs. Meanwhile, everything Odo Amnesty just hard pushed this one into the tower way before. He should yeah, have pushed no it way earlier. It's already going to push down no matter what. He should have done a better job in fast pushing the wave and therefore get Huni to either lose a few minions or TP before he wanted to. Because yeah, now Huni's going to get everything. Garden's actually gone a little far forward. He takes a lot of damage, wanders into the brush to try and hide himself, but there was a ward in there. Returns the damage onto Yellow Star, but Steelback still very healthy. As uh, Huni's taking his place up in the top, trying yeah. to pick up this farm. Should be able to get most of it. But yeah, I'm a little bit confused as to uh, the way H2K chose to start off this game. I, I definitely don't think they predicted the uh, grump no. attempt by Huni. That's for sure. They were trying to predict the red buff start by de-warding on it. But because they showed themselves on the bottom side, that allowed Fnatic to get into the top lane or the top jungle, unspotted, and take that red buff. There was no defensive wards from H2K to spot them. They were all going to the bottom side, all five members. So that was really smart adaptation from Fnatic. And with Huni getting these camps early, it means he can go for the skirmishes Saber. Normally, you would sit in the lane and you won't have it before the first pack. So you don't really do anything. Like, your smite is not going to be effective in any way. By him doing these camps first, he gets the skirmishers, he's back in the lane, he's level 4. Let's see the XP at the moment between them. Odo Amna is near or close to level 5, just needing about 10%. Huni is only 5% behind him, honestly, on this Lee Sin. So they're going to hit level 5 nearly at the same time. Right around the same. Charm goes wide from Ryu as Febbin starts chasing him forward here. Flash used. Try and dodge out the chain, so... Hey, we talked about this matchup here. He's not having a good time already. You don't have the same options as a LeBlanc in the early stages as an Ari here. You cannot be the one deciding the fights the same way unless you heavily outplay LeBlanc. Ryu is down in farm. He's now used his flash. Not a good start for him. I'm sure he wanted to Z, but the composition they had already picked with the Sivir, with the side top, simply meant there was too much physical damage. Not gonna happen. Ooh, steal back. Let's dodge out of the Boomerang Blade. Some fancy footwork there, but Hjarnin is the one with the lead in the CS department by about 11 right now. He goes down to 10. Rain over in the middle. Just, uh, throwing a little bit of damage onto Ryu as he consumes a minion, just continues walking. Give some time for Devin to come back. Tower was not really under some serious threat there. Oh! Oh. Also a good thing about Fnatic with this Nuna pick is you don't need the same amount of farm as other junglers. Mm -hmm. So it means that Huni can walk down and do camps in your own jungle. He just took the Gromp now, returning to the lane. So he's trying to farm his own lane and then take the Gromp, maybe the Wolves, every time he can. He is keeping up with Odo on main levels. And now obviously the main objective is going to be the once or if Huni can manage to win the lane here, take the top tower then suddenly you can start moving into the enemy jungle and use your Nuno and Lee Sin to counter jungle. Like, that's the main goal between this, or of this Lee Sin pick. Thing is, Huni's just not been very impactful on it, if you look at the two games played already. 
Now, overall, it really hasn't been as impressive as his other choices, and he could be in some serious trouble here. If Lulex gives him a hard time, he's able to dodge his way out of danger, though. And that, again, is a fun thing about this pick, because normally you see Brutalize on a Lee Sin and you're lane bully. But because he's going Cinderhold, because he's going full tank, he never has that pressure. And normally when you see Smite TP, it's on top laners that really benefits from being massively tanky. Lakeham has other things to offer, like a Shivana who can have fantastic either counter jungle or fantastic flank potential. Super, super tanky to Lakeham from a from oh. OT as well. Wow! Oh, oh, wow! Trying to stop, trying to flash Two in front of the Scion here. flashes burned. And Odawamne takes the express lane. Out of town right now. Yellowstar could be in some serious trouble as Steelback pushes forward on him, dashes forward, heal is popped, Ignite is still taking, but it's gonna be on Steelback. And they've been pushed back down here on the bottom. We still don't have first blood. Been a lot of close calls though to Fischio. Yeah, oh, oh wait a minute. flashing! I spoke too soon. Well, maybe not. Yarnin should not be sticking around. I don't care if Lulex is there. That was close. That was very close. And Lulex, All the summoners. They're just going to push it in and then go back to base. There's enough gold for Yannan to get a BF sword. The same for, for a steel back here. Just waiting for 1500 gold, I would assume, before he gets a BF sword and nothing else. Yeah, there we go. Very important for him. He didn't go for pickaxe and, and boots because then he would be even further behind in the lane matchup. Got to be able to match the items early on of a severe. In this situation, meanwhile, mid lane slightly in favor of Fibbin. He just roamed top lane, as we saw before. Tried to flash in front of the sign ulti to stop him. That allowed Ryu to get quite some farm in the mid lane. Even gets good timing on the blue buff here. Doesn't have to worry about losing any minions while getting the blue buff. Which we know all the solo queue mid laners always hate when you're pinging. Oh, I want to lose minions, blah, 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 whatever. Now... It's a good thing this isn't solo queue. Yeah, it, well, it is not. Except for the top lane, which is... Normally it's solo queue pick, but it's it's a bit different. I'll give you that. Now Huni still pushing the wave in. Odoamne, he's actually got himself a slight CS lead, but that's about to evaporate, of course, as Odoamne should be able to chop chop all these minions up. Yellowstar moving in on Hyarnin. Pops on the hunt. Gets flayed back in the spell shield. Will block the hook. However, they nearly had enough to finish him off. Not quite. Right now, Keeping it cool though from Yarnin here. Saved the spell shield for the hook. Didn't want to use it on the flay at first. Therefore, he managed to stay alive. But he was left on his own in the middle of the lane. There's no wards to protect him at all. Kasinga has been roaming towards the mid lane to play, play some few wards. And oh, Ultimate oh, Rain over. Yeah, he gets knocked all the way back in. It's Lulix who has to flash out as the Apple of Zero comes in. Calling intercepted by Hyarnan and Kasing. Oh, so close for so many of these H2K members time and time again. The quick thinking from Yarnin means that. They're not able to push any farther here on this Fnatic side. No, still a lot of fights. Just nobody's been dying yet. Fnatic does have to control the bottom lane in terms of the wards. That's why they could get that or try to get that pick on Yannin beforehand. But they've been losing the lane, which, as we have talked about quite a few times, has been a problem for Steelbike and Yellowstar all split long. Is when they don't play Graves, they don't tend to win the dual lane. Every single AD carry Steelbike has picked is behind on average in CS at 10 minutes compared to the other AD carry. Every single one except for Graves. That's the only one where, he's a, where he has a 4 CS lead. Just to compare it for Given, on average, has 12 CS lead at 10 minutes over the other AD carry. Just the difference between the, the laning presence at least. Steelback has been way better yeah. in terms of team fighting than laning phase and H2K. Getting standard lanes for them is so good here because they get this advantage here. They can push down these towers. Whenever Yannin win his lane on his own, let's talk about that after because there's a TP. Oh, he hits the Another edge of the coming. box. Huni's coming in as well. There's the Monsoon, but Kasing is going to be the one caught on a hook. Do they have enough damage to pick him off? In comes Odoamne, and Huni is going to be locked up for just a moment. Can he make his escape or just turn it around? As here comes Rain over Steelback, still hitting the shots in the backside. The axe chops up Huni, Kasing. Yarnin moving forward, it's not over yet. And again, no fatality. Nobody died. But this is good for H2K because they get to constantly push their wave. As I was saying before here, what H2K always aim to do is use Yarnin as your tower pusher. If he wins his lane on his own, he will take the tower and then he will rotate top of mid lane and he will continue pushing on this Sivir. And that's perfect for H2K. If he doesn't win his lane, he will go back and sacrifice his own lane to go push anyway on one of the other lanes, simply to start getting down these outer turrets. In this situation, because he's doing so well on his own, he will get that bot lane tower. Not right now, but he Eventually. will get it later on. He's slowly chipping it away. 
Dragon has been started after this fight here, where H2K went back to base. And will be picked up from or by Fnatic, obviously having that Nuno for the early Dragon pressure. No response from H2K. Already returned to the lanes. Yeah, it wasn't really much of an opportunity for them to try and contest that. So Fnatic, they pick up Drake number one, just shy of 12 minutes into this game. That is the only thing on the scoreboard. No towers, no kills. Let's see if that changes. Ryu now duking it out with Huni. It's really more about the minions right now. I think Ryu is perfectly okay with that. He's had a couple of close shaves himself dealing with Febiv. Going for the Ludens Echo Rush, which we see often from Ryu. Really aiming to snowball the early on. And as a first item, it is still one of the best in terms of pure damage. But this is still such a standard and perfect H2K early game where they get to slowly poke down these towers here. And because nobody has died, they will start getting the goal lead from it. None of their towers have taken barely any damage. So them getting this top lane means now focus is going to be in the bottom lane from Yarnan, who's already doing work on his own. And if we look at week nine, when these two teams played, it was the same deal. H2K pushed down the towers, but Fnatic got the kills in this game here. Fnatic hasn't been able to get the kills. And if we keep this laning phase going, then H2K will slowly but surely get down the last few out of turrets and get quite a goal lead. So far, it's amounted to 700 for themselves. Should be okay with it. They do like the slow and steady game. Yarn and now is going to have to pop the spell shield early on the hunt, though, and he nearly eats it as he takes quite a lot of damage. Yellow Star and Steelback move away from this one. Once again, we've got the disengage. Elstar, parting shot on him. Febivin, though, coming in with Rainover. They're looking to dive this one. He'll pop preemptively. Kasing might be the casualty here. Garden's going to get chased down. Spell Shield's popped. Dodges out from the chains, though. Kasing is alive back. as well. Kasing's still hanging in there. Look at the mid lane. Fnatic get nothing for this. Ryo just pushing it in. Huni's coming out to try and stop him. That's another tower now. Really, really low from Fnatic. They stay in the bottom lane. They want to get a few kills and get this bot lane tower. Kasing barely gets scratched in all that. The tower, however, is not so fortunate, but it's sticking around for now. Janna Shield will come out onto it. Looney roving around. He's going to connect onto Ryu, challenging Smite Throw and the Charm, and the Foxfire lands on him, but it doesn't do nearly enough damage, and he's going to kick him away from his own tower after the ward hop. Ryu going to be forced to spend the Spirit Rush. Charges, moving back once again. Ryu ticking away, but the Ignite will not be enough to take his health bar down as he munches a biscuit. Kasing now trying to push Rainover back off the blue, but he eats it anyways. Still no deaths. Approaching the 15 minute mark in here, and Odawamne has left He's the station. He's out of here. Close, close calls once again here. The whole play from Fnatic was pretty well set up because they had pushed the top lane, so Huni was going to roam down and stop um, Ryu from taking mid tower. Meanwhile, the plan was obviously to dive them bottom lane 4v2, get two kills, get the tower, and therefore break the whole laning phase and get some kills and, and a tower for Fnatic while defending their waves with Huni on both mid and top lane. But because they didn't manage to secure any kills, H2K once again slightly comes out ahead. Because these two outer turrets in mid and bottom lane is still fairly low from Fnatic. It's just a few hits from H2K and they go down. Now they've taken Jan already moved into the mid lane. This is what they always like to do. And you can always fast push on Sivir. He did pick up an Aries Blade. Would have loved if that was a pickaxe. First time when he went back. He got this one later. I mean, he, he so, has built so up a pretty so solid gold lead, but yeah. You I, usually have that over Steelback anyways. I, I would assume he had just 800 gold when he backed and he couldn't get the pickaxe. And that's why he went for Aries Blade, which is fine in that sense. But now it doesn't really matter anyway for him, as he already got the pickaxe yeah. completed. So with that one done... Still the game is settled just a little bit. Slight lead for HDK, just the way they like it. Rainover has been a pain in their side, though. Took away the blue buff. A little bit ago, he's going to be looking to do uh, this one again, since Febivin isn't in the area to try and grab it. Ryu looking to push down the bottom side while that's all happening. A few hits. Every single time, Pyro. Just ship away. Fnatic had a good play before. They had the, a good plan, the way they were going to execute it as well. The problem was that once again, H2K simply read it and managed to escape and stay alive, which is the big deal for them. Fnatic tends to struggle if they do fall behind in the mid game as well. And this is purely in H2K's favor. Everything they've been doing so far, early attack speed boots before Infinity Edge and Yannan as well, simply for more 
pushing potential on the Sivir. This is going to be the mid tower. Dragon is spawning in a minute, so you can rotate now from the mid lane down towards the bottom side. Push it in while Steelbike is stuck here. It's going to be a bit late because he has to clear the minions first. Take that bot lane tower and then go straight up back up to Dragon. And you have now taken everything you can on the bottom side of the map. And you force Fnatic to walk through a jungle which should have been warded up, but Fnatic does a good job here playing out a few of them. And H2K decides to simply back away then say, fan off, you are reading our play. We're not going to go for them. We're not going to take any chances before Dragon is born. No reason to right now. So Fnatic, they did possess that first Dragon. They were able to do it thanks to their wards, thanks to their timing as well. And Huni waiting in this brush. See if he can get Sneaky Steel off onto this red. Or maybe just back away from it. Oh, you can queue, smite it, man. He can easily queue. Oh, and he just takes it. Thank you very much. Hate to eat and run, <laughs> but I'm out. Goodbye. That's the thing. I mean, he makes some good plays on this Lee Sin. He's super annoying to play against, clearly. But when it comes to the big late game fights, we're going to see what he can offer compared to a Sam. Rain over here blowing his ulti on Lulex. The dragon just came up, yeah. too. Fnatic's trying, to obviously, to, to get control of the area and therefore push Lulex away. They got a good ping ward, but... They got a teleport. They double no teleport ulti. coming in now. Here comes Odoamne trying to go onto Huni here. The fight's gonna get started. We're certainly gonna see first blood here, I would hope. Huni is going to get chopped down by Odoamne. Meanwhile, Lulex chasing everyone back, throws in the barrel. And no, unbelievably, it hasn't happened yet. Febivin still trying to chase out Rainover. Looking to push forward. Huni's there as well. They just don't have enough damage to pick off anyone. And the dragon's <laughs> still alive here, Deficio. No first blood yet. No, not quite. Fnatic winning the fight though. Odo Amna tried to get the flank with his ulti, but only managed to get onto the tanks here, and then he simply couldn't keep chasing down the river. Ryu has ulti. So has Kasing for H2K on the side of Fnatic. Favorite event only, of course, with the short cooldown of a LeBlanc. Lulix is recalling. Can they stall it? Fnatic looks to take it. They have double smite and Nuno, remember. I feel like it's going to be extremely hard for them to try and steal this one away. It does, what? though. Go over to Hjarnin on an auto attack. Still no kills. We've got Kyra. two dragons. Double smite and a Nunu. And they lost it, but there we go. There's first blood. It is going to be rain over going down to Ryu. H2K are just going to look to take everything away from Fnatic here. But Odo Omne, he's the one who's caught on the hook from Yellowstar. Tower extremely low. They ought to be able to dive this one. In comes Odo Omne, gets juked out. The charm not going to land. Yellowstar going down. Monsoon to keep Ryu alive. Febivin dashing in. Should be able to pick him off, and he does. Kasing trying to make his escape with the rest, but Febivin dashing in. The axe not the way they wanted it to go. Febivin mimic popped there. Or mirror image, I should say. And just like that, a switch flips, and the action starts out. But that dragon steal. And Huni going down. And a mid tower going down. H2K just got everything they wanted right there. When your AD carry gets the dragon like that, everything is going your way. One kill for Fnatic after the dive from H2K. But they got the mid tower as well. Let's see it again. Lulex, look at your minimap. He's running from base. Febiman isn't here yet either, so they're basically fighting over the dragon. I've got it with no. an auto. Yeah. Just wow. And then. And then what happens? H2K now? wants to chase in. Ryu lands the charm. Nice dump for him. Gets the first, but he goes for that loot and Zeko. So again, his early damage is extremely high. AoE damage as well. I don't think they see Febiman before they already started the dive. And that's why they do get a little bit surprised, but still managed to get another kill from it. <laughs> and the Jukes, too. <laughs> Pretty funny fight, honestly. And Ryu goes down, but look at the minimap. We have a lovely Yarn just saying, well, I don't want to fight, I don't want to take another tower. And just to get even more. Yeah, I mean, they grab so much out of this, and then and then Huni goes in. You don't see it, but Huni goes in and, and well, gets himself yeah. Dead. And we've talked so much Lack about this turn. pick from him. What we do see again, in terms of team fighting, it's very hard for him to do anything. He can kick someone back, and that's about it. He doesn't have any damage. There's zero or, damage. I mean, he can steal buffs away. He can sure. be really okay, annoying, yeah. but that's how effective stuff. is that one? And now Febivin put some serious damage onto Hyarna, but he took some as well. Has They're to back away. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really wonky to see how... how Huni in particular can contribute to these fights, especially as chaotic as they are, he just doesn't provide any damage. And that's why, again, you normally see it on, let's say, Shivana, who has 
Gonna get fairly high damage just from like the base damage she gets. Potentially even go for play the Rune King if she wants to split push. Otherwise, she just scales so well into late game. And that's where Cinderhawk is gonna add so much extra with the 25% uh, bonus HP, even the 20% damage reduction in a late game fight where you are honestly a threat. The Lee Sin will not be. But we have to give Huni some credit on stealing buffs away, as you mentioned yeah, yourself. He's been, he's been a really massive annoyance for this H2K team, but I feel like there are a few ways you can annoy the enemy team to death. Yeah, I would prefer just killing them in team fights. Mm -hmm. It's usually a more conventional strategy. Normally, yeah. I mean, I've never seen a game being won just by taking red buffs. Can't say that I have either. Now, H2K, uh, I've got decent control on the top side. It's about to be neutralized, though, and that even will look to clear the wave. A lot of wards around the Baron side again, trying to make sure Fnatic doesn't pull anything sneaky. Still a fairly comfortable lead for them, just because they are comfortable anytime they are in the lead, not giving up any advantages to Fnatic. And Odo Omni can push their waves fairly easily on this Scion here. He's maxing Q as well after the recent changes, so you have great wave clear for himself to keep pushing them down. And then, as you can see, H2K here just timing their movements from the lanes. They're pushing down every lane at once, and then they're waiting for the waves to hit the towers, and then decide, okay, where can we go? Where, where's the least wave there from Fnatic? Okay, at the moment, it's going to be on the top side, so we go down there with the wave coming in to the tower and get some damage, force a teleport as well from Huni. Exactly, And then you can it. go back now, do exactly the same. You got a TP advantage, so you can keep Odo Amna after this push is over back to the top side, and then Dragon suddenly spawns in 1 minute 20 seconds, where you can either take the tier 2 tower top, or you can take the fight. Let's see if February is trying to assassinate someone. Oh, it was Kasing, who immediately spends his monsoon, moves it back. Meanwhile, Huni comes in, gets dragged right back out. A minute on this next dragon, but they're not done just yet. Time to get the hell out of dodge, as Lulex throws in the big barrel for the disengage. Yeah, February still has. A lot of damage, which Fnatic might lack without him. They're not going to have Kasing right now. His rotations are down, obviously. Hyodawame is hooked up on a line. He is going to go incredibly low as he flashes away from this Lulex, getting in front to body block everything. And Kasing actually still making some use here. He didn't quite back as he was able to complete a Howling Gale over the wall. And Fnatic once again back away from this one. Nice little pick though from them, at least forcing the flash from Odo Amna. Dragon is gonna spawn soon. There's two pinks already from H2K. They get to push the waves into the towers as well. So they're gonna have full control of this dragon when it spawns. And Fnatic is gonna have to run in and face check them in the river. It's gonna be a tough one, especially when you play against the Ludens Echo Ari. One charm for Ryu is enough to chunk down a member of Fnatic and basically force them away from the dragon. And when you can play around pink wards near an objective as an Ari on LeBlanc, generally an assassin, it's just so fantastic for you because you get to be this guy here who can just decide to, to fight even before it happens because you can just get that one pick. Look at Febrevin here. Oh. Smart ward. Super smart. Very, very smart. And now Fnatic are bailing out over the dragon wall. They are going to get a catch on Lulex, however. This is going to force the fight to get started as he gets kicked back. He's going to try to bail out, however. In comes Febrevin to try and pick off Ryu. Nearly accomplishes it, but they've chased him away. Huni very low as well, but that's the one that they want to take the damage. Ryu dashes in again. And H2K continue on the chase. Force a couple of summoners here as Febrevin dashes his way once again. I can't believe the number of fights we've seen this game where no one has given up the ghost. They're so close every single time and then they managed to back away or flash away. That board from February though saved his life. He would have walked in, face check onto an Ari. Now the can steal it. Yeah, this time hey, they got it. Hooney. Well, it's not just red buffs, Deficio. How about that? Fnatic grabbed themselves dragon number two from the clutches of H2K. So yeah, Dragon Steel, Baron Steel earlier from Hooning, game one. Again, he's very good at being annoying on this Lee Sin and secure some very important objectives for Fnatic. H2K is going to be annoyed about that one. Yeah, that's uh, for all intents and purposes was theirs. But you have to think the dragon that they were able to pick up was uh, also not necessarily one you would have expected. I guess that's fair to say. That should have gone over to Fnatic, and this one should have gone to H2K. So everything's even at the end of the day. In that sense, yeah. Obviously, H2K are still in a quite large goal. Let's see it again, how it happened. He basically just jumped in 
There was a ward being placed from Fnatic, no sweeper to disable it or anything, and then he jumps in and picks it up. Simply just a smite steal for him. That's the risk. I mean, if a ward comes down, a lot of teams will say you're going to have to play it or use the sweeper on it to disable the ward before you can then finish the dragon. But when it ha happens just in the heat of the moment, like the ward just comes down when you're having the dragon so low, it's very hard to do that in time. So well played from Hoon at uh -oh. least picking up now. They're chasing on Febivan. Let's see if he's a true master of escape here, trying to run back the other direction as the rest of HDK were looking to collapse on him. But Yarnin a step ahead of that one. Oduwam, they're going to take a back. HDK is doing this while the bottom lane has been pushed in yep. by oh, Hooney. Yarnin has so much damage, though. There's a flash out of Febivan. Let's see if the chase can happen as Odoamne teleported into the bottom to try and save this one. Oh, but the mid turret it. was going, and Yarnin just picks that one up. But now they need to fight in the mid lane from H2K if they want to benefit from this. Otherwise, they just lost a tower Four and only kill. got one kill. They need to be able to get something else. They can start a Baron here, force Fnatic to come in and fight them on it. I mean, with 27 minutes in, you got a fairly tanky Gragas. you got a Sign who can join in as well. You need something else. Otherwise, that trade was in favor of Fnatic. By getting that mid tower for it, it looks like H2K is still around the Baron. Yeah, Normally, before you can make a play like this, where you like five-man chase onto one guy, you need to make sure your other lanes are in a good position for you, where you've already pushed him down. So there's no quick objective for the enemy team to take while you're chasing this guy. The mid lane was open, the bottom lane was pushing in as well from Cooney. That's why Odom had to teleport back then to defend it, while they just took the mid tower forward. So yeah. H2K just getting a little bit too greedy for Febivan here in the top lane. Burned a teleport, lost a tower in middle. Yeah, they got one kill. Definitely yeah. not worth in that case. No, no, no. For sure worth for Fnatic. For Fnatic, yeah. Looney gonna find there's only one Raptor left. Smites it down. It's just a, a smattering of wards over and around the barren side of the river as well. And now that uh, H2K's gone a roving through the Fnatic jungle, they placed a couple of their own down as well. So there will be no sneaky attempts at that one still. Looking to chase down Odo Wamne. He's gonna stop on the wall. Hooney though, gets checked a little too far forward. He gets knocked back by the barrel, surrounded by H2K, and bursted down just like that. <laughs> That's getting exploded. H2K looking at the mid lane now. Don't have any side lanes with him. Just wanna go for this one tower here, potentially even a dive. That's a nice little play from Fibberman. They were trying to chunk down Riven. Riven, Ryu. It's now called Riven. Fibberman, yes. Uh, They've defended this tower for now. Really not that much damage HK's been able to put out on it, and spending a calling to do so, still very, very useful. They've got a lot of wave clear on the side of Fnatic. HK in the retreat now. Fnatic actually pinging on the Baron. We'll see if they try to bait this one out. I mean, Kasing is going back. This is a numbers disadvantage for H2K. And they're just clearing out the vision themselves, getting themselves a Scuttle Crab on top of it. The problem for H2K is whenever they get a kill, there's no objective they can go for because they haven't controlled the side lanes for a long time now. They've allowed Fnatic to push them up every time. The reason it's important is because, well, as you see, Fnatic gets caught out, they die, but they manage to defend the tower anyway and don't really lose anything from it other than just one kill. Meanwhile, you got the minions now doing work on the bottom side. Nobody has teleport on H2K to go de defend it. They cannot go there, clear the wave because the Baron is at risk then. So they're just gonna have to, to let the tower take all the minions for themselves, and H2K here, it's good they're getting picks, but they have to look a little bit further and say, okay, once we get the pick, what are we gonna do? Oh, we have no lanes pushing in, no dragon is alive, and we don't feel like we can do a 4v5 Baron, fair enough, we can't really get anything. Set up the ways first, then go for Whoa. the picks. Interrupt the Huni as he goes in onto Lulex. Yeah, I, I, H2K are just trying to make sure that they don't have a chance to take this Baron, but Kasing got chunked very, very low. However, it's Huni the one who's looking to go down here. Rain over flashes as soon as his absolute zero channel completes. Lulex picking up Huni. Oda Wamne in the front. Forget the box. Rain is the one going down as Yarnin picks that kill up. Lulex getting chunked low, but he's got a front line to deal. And a double kill goes over to Yarnin. The damage out of this Sivir is unreal. And if not, if it's not Baron time now to fish yeah. I don't know when it's gonna be. So while well, H2K has been creating these picks, they couldn't get anything. Now they got a big team fight instead. And that's exactly what they needed. Three kills, get the Baron. Now there's... Doesn't matter what happens on the side lanes. 
He's get your bound. Oh, maybe we can get a kill on Steelback. We do. Oh, I think wow. we got a Ryu comes up huge. Grab some dessert with your dinner. They got themselves a Baron and another kill. And let's see that fight again, because I think it was Fnatic who started the whole thing. Ryu had no ult. He's coming from the bottom side now. So is Janin. So Fnatic starts the fight, or try to start it at least. And this opens up now for the carries of H2K to deal a lot of damage, because it's only the tanks and the support who's being the target for Fnatic. Now Steelback, oh sorry, Janin and Ryu joins in. And did Huni just take another dragon? Yes, he did. So two dragons wow. and a Baron. That's his, that's his counter, but you know, in the first game when they got the Baron, they did not win that one. But, I mean, this is still so important for Fnatic, because you can you deny that potential fifth dragon for H2K. You might even go towards it yourself. If, yeah, you, if, you, if you manage to pull off a comeback and, and win a late game team fight, you suddenly have that option. Huni stealing the dragons is a great thing for Fnatic, but them starting that fight, again, everything was on to the tanks. Once Ryu, once Janen joined, there was nothing left really for Fnatic to pick them off. They don't have a massive Wombo Combo team fight. They have Skirmish. You want to spread out H2K. You want to single out targets with your LeBlanc, otherwise you're not going to win it. And H2K, you're just staying together. Big tanks in the front line. Janus disengaging the back line, and then you just wait patiently. You just wait. Poke down the tanks. Lee Sin, as we've said time and time again, doesn't offer a whole lot. Just poke him down. I mean, he can't even defend this one. Not that it was going to be easy with the Baron buff minions. And the rest of H2K at the back. Fnatic are going to look to try and defend this one. We'll see how far they want to push in. Because things caught, but they don't want to go in on it. A big calling out of Steelback will force Yarnin back. I think that'll be the end of this push for now. But meanwhile, back over to Ryu in the mid. Febivin looking to chase him down if he can. H2K aren't done with this Fnatic side of the map just yet, though. Takes a blue buff at least. They still have the Baron buff for them. Yarnin needs to life still a little bit before they can go back. Push Ryu is also in the base at the moment. So H2K should just back away. No reason to take a chance. Don't want to risk a 4v5 team fight for them. At least wait for Ryu to return. You have Teleport as well. You can just split up in 1-3-1 now. Ryu sits in the mid lane. Odamna goes down to the bottom lane. And then Ryu is going to have to move in and join his teammates in time. Only real threat on Fnatic is Febivan on this LeBlanc. As long as you see where he's going. You got the spell shield on Sivir. She's very hard to kill for LeBlanc, obviously. You got the Janna shield, you got Mikhail's, you have enough tools to protect Yanan at this point. Nice hook. Yeah, it's gonna be on to Ryu, but they can't put any damage on him. Still, the mini waves continue to flow in the middle and in the top. This tower looks like it's going down to Fischio. Number one of the inhibitor turrets. 34 and a half minutes into this game. It has been action packed for how few kills we've had. Yarn and crucial spell shield right there. Inhibitor should be going down, but H2K, they're more interested in the kills. Charm lands on Rainover. Yarnin is gonna be able to pick up Yellow Star. Steal back. He's not going down just yet. Ryu got shut down by him. It is a 2 4 1 so far, but they'll go back and polish off the inhibitor, and Huni just can't do anything else. Fnatic's chance right now hinges on this massive mini wave in the bottom side. See if H2K can do something about it. Looks like they're more interested in middle. Yeah, H2K here playing it so well. You can see how Yana is just staying untouched every single time with the spell shield. Fnatic has no real way of engaging. They need the Lee Sin to jump in with the LeBlanc. That's the only thing they can do to start a fight. H2K clearly doesn't care about it. No, they definitely don't care at all. Their front line is big enough. Yarnin was even tanking a few tower shots. They do give up the inner turret in the bottom side. But for the price of two inhibitor turrets, one inhib, that is absolutely worth. And they'll be able to grab themselves a couple more minions on the way out. Ryu looking to clear down on the bottom. H2K looking in good shape. Let's see how it all unfolded, however. Well, again, just look at John in here with the spell shield, blocking everything he has. Janna shield, I mean, he's never going to die. And now H2K gets to send in the big tanks in the front. Ryu dancing around as well. He's building full damage because, again, there's nothing that can really kill him unless he mispositions in the very end, but he is obviously worth it after getting two kills. Still back. He doing, gets away at least. Staying alive, yeah. All right, Fnatic. What can they do to come back? There's no Baron, so they cannot rush that one. They've gotten three dragons, that's great. From Huni stealing them, but that's not really needed for H2K now. They don't have to care about the dragons at this point. And suddenly Fnatic is gonna have to set up, dare I say it, the Fnatic death push. They need to bait H2K some way. 
where they can get a flank with the LeBanc and, and the Lee Sin and get a kill on Yarn and Oreo when the fight starts. Otherwise, they cannot get through the big tanks. If it's a standard team fight, Fnatic cannot burst through a Cyan and a Gragas. And that opens up now for Fnatic or H2K to just slowly chip away in these tanks here. Fnatic does not have the setup though on the map to get any kind of traps on H2K. And therefore, H2K is looking to close out this game. H2K, they've gotten just about everything they've wanted this game. Maybe a couple of dragons, no, but so far staying quite safe. And you can see as soon as Febivin comes in, they move back just in time. Come right back in once again to polish off inhibitor number two in the middle. Colin comes out. They're not really worried about it. Febivin can't do much here. And a second inhibitor goes down. Now H2K eyeballs the bottom side. They want to win, but they want to do it methodically. No reason to take a chance. I mean, your late game is better anyway than Fnatic's in terms of the comps, so you don't have to... Right, and you could end up throwing dive, it too. you know, to Nexus turrets or anything. Yeah, no reason for them to take an unnecessary risk. 37 and a half minutes in, this is one of our longer games so far. We'll see if they can... Not set up a flank, looks like they're just clearing out a few more minion waves there. Fnatic pinging for the bottom side. They know that this should be the next logical place for H2K, but Dragon is spawning in about five seconds as well. I feel like H2K want to neutralize the Huni factor before they start this one, though. At least see if they can kill him if he jumps in. So he gets the Dragon, but you get a kill, which is enough to push down for the last inhibitor. Now, death timers are so long. They popped on the hunt, and Odawamne getting the flank off, immediately popping his ultimate. Yellowstar is going to be the one going down. They should be able to take this tower and Dragon, whenever they want it, forget the minions. They don't even need them. Strong enough to just go for whatever kills they want. Febben is on the side here. Yeah, without Yellowstar here, though, it's going to be very difficult. They've got the numbers disadvantage. Febben's going to have to pull a miracle pick. Rainover getting chunked down. The mini wave still pretty big. Febben trying to make something happen, but Odawamne intercepts him. Another inhibitor turret going down. Inhibitor number three looking to follow. H2K, they don't need the dragons to try to finish this one off. They are going to... Hesitate for just a moment. No minions just yet. They're starting to pour in, but they will have those double super minion waves. Rius is trying to chase Febivan here, force him to stay out of his own base here. In comes Yellowstar. He's not going to get the hook he wanted. So many minions here. Fnatic, they're just getting crushed under the slow pushing pressure. Yellowstar going down again as Yarnan picks him up. The last Nexus turret is looking to fall. Huni trying to cause a distraction, but he's just going to get himself killed as slowly as he is. A double kill going over to Yarnan, but he'll fall as well. The monsoon was not enough to keep him alive. The Nexus, however, is bare. It's not quite 40 minutes into this game. After all, a Rainover looks like he's going down. Febivin just trying to move around, but it's all over. That's going to be H2K coming up 2-1 and one on the series. That was a very, very standard H2K game here. They managed to get down the outer turrets early in the laning phase. Bottom lane was in their favor. Good trades from Steelbike and Yellowstar, but the farm was in Kasing and Yannan's back here, and they were the ones pushing down the turrets. We saw Fnatic try to make plays. They tried to roam around the map, four-man dive on the bottom lane, but it was predicted. And every single time H2K managed to escape, and get someone to push elsewhere on the map. So they got down these towers here, they got a massive lead from it. And that's where Fnatic's composition, while it worked in the last game, because they got this big team fight at the Dragon where they got five kills, which managed to snowball it. It didn't happen in this one here, they didn't get the kills. And suddenly the LeBlanc, it becomes a lot harder for you to find the picks. The Lee Sin obviously falls off super hard. And you simply don't have the same team fight from Fnatic when you fall this far behind with a very mid game focused composition. And that's. Full credit to H2K, playing the early game very smart. Very often, we had some low HP bars. Yes, but... But they stayed alive, and that was the important one, and that's why they won the game. And they got done what they needed to, despite giving up a number of dragons to yeah. Uni, uh, and a num an untold number of red buffs, but... Enough Lee Sin. Yeah, it really is Enough. just not working out for them. This It's is too risky, that's the thing. Exactly, and he's, he's I, not. they're not getting any damage, this is the problem. When you see those little health bars, sometimes it's, you know, Master of Escapes, but sometimes... It's because they just don't have damage. It is, and, 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 and the team fighting in the late game, if you are even in gold, you have a sign and a Lee Sin. The, Lee, the sign is going to do so much more for your team. And that's why or the, one of the problems for Fnatic is to make it a bit harder for themselves. They rely 100% on being able to snowball early game when they pick a comp like this. Twice in a row now. 
One game it worked. Sure, this game it backfired because H2K took just took it super slow. Super slow, just push down the yep. towers, get and the goal that's lead. that's the pace that they want. They, it is. They, they focus the objectives. And they then you get these afraid. two big tanks and everything that still does a lot because they have so much CC yeah. in, in the big team fights. Yeah, and, well, and this is the problem. Like, they put pretty much everything on the events back at that point to say, hey, uh, get a couple of key picks off. If you can take down Hyarnin, uh, if you can take down Ryu, that would be great. Except that he just couldn't after a while. Oduwame started predicting his pathing. He started running in front of him. And there just was no way they could really make it happen. So... That was it for game three. Now to break this one down, we're going to send it back to the analysts for a look in.